Thanksgiving week. Our text actually comes from the scripture that uh, Jean read. Uh, I want to just take one verse of Psalms 107, verse 1. Verse 1 of Psalms 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. You know, it's been a difficult two years. And some people may be struggling with the idea of being thankful. You know, with the COVID-19 pandemic, we've had some political division. We've had some social and racial issues and unrest. Uh, we've had the debates, uh, sometimes violent over masks, no masks, vaccinations, no vaccinations, uh, vaccine mandates, no mandates financial uncertainty, and now we have extremely high inflation. Now, that doesn't include any personal health issues or relationship issues or other issues that we've had. Now, all of this has wreaked havoc on the lives of many and actually has affected everybody. Uh, Everyone has been touched in some way, and yet even with that, I still say and remind you that we all have a reason to be thankful. It's not just because you haven't gotten COVID or you recovered from it. It's not because you uh, don't have any financial problems. It's not because you kept your job or found a new one if you lost it during the pandemic. Uh, It's not because we're still able to maintain our lives in some fashion despite of what every, all this happened. No, it's not because of that. We can be thankful. Our being thankful goes deeper than just being thankful for overcoming difficult circumstances in our lives. What I'm talking about today is the thankfulness that is reserved for God and for him alone. You're giving thanks to God is a major part of our worshiping him because through it, through thanksgiving, we yield ourselves to God and recognize what he's doing in our lives. We stop, we remember, and we are grateful, and that comes out in our praise and thanksgiving. Giving thanks to God comes from a place deep inside us, a place where we remember where we could be without him. Not just in this world that we live in physically, but where we would spend eternity because he sent his son to die for us. That thanksgiving is that deep in us. Repenting or repenting of sin is even easy when we remember why we are thankful. Think about it. If we were uh, walking in a place where we are grateful for what God has done for us, our being grateful is a state of thankfulness, and it is our being thankful that causes us to want to spend more time with God. If we're thankful and grateful, we want to spend more time in God's presence. Now, I know, I know, that we understand what it means to give thanks. I want to share a story with you that I read this week to kind of get some get our mind focused. I read a story about a minister who uh, went to a crowded restaurant and he sat down across from a guy who was already eating. Uh, the minister paused for a moment to ask a blessing and give thanks before he started to eat because that's what he usually did. He was accustomed to doing that and it confused or perplexed his fellow diner. This fellow guy, this fellow diner, this guy, asked him if he had a headache or was something wrong with the food. The minister explained that he had given thanks to God for his food. The man responded, oh, okay, you're one of those, huh? Well, this is what he said. I work hard for my food. 
and I earn it by the sweat of my brow, so I never thank anybody else for it. I don't have to thank anyone for it. I just start eating. Well, there are many people in the world that believe the same way this guy does. There are people who believe that God has nothing to do with what they have achieved in this life. The people who believe that they are self-made, the people who believe that they pull themselves up by their own bootstraps so they should get all the credit for who they are and what they have accomplished. Now, Psalms 107, which, you know, Gene read part of that this morning, the psalmist says, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind four times. He says it four times in this psalm. He says it in verse 8, verse 15, verse 21, and verse 31. He says, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. He says it four times in that psalm. So read it. I want us to go now, though, to a familiar psalm. Let's go to Psalm uh, 100. Some familiar psalm to us. And I want to read uh, verses 1 through 4. Psalm 100 says, I'm reading from the NIV. Shout for the joy, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us. And we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Now the writer of this psalm says we are to make a joyful noise and enter into our Father's presence with thanksgiving and praise. What he doesn't say is that we are to do this just when everything in our lives is going right. He doesn't say we're to do this when all of our bills are paid, when no one is sick or hurting. No. This psalmist is right is saying joyful praise is to be our lifestyle. Joyful praise should be our lifestyle. When we think of what God has done for us, we are to make a joyful noise when we're having a bad day. We are to enter our Father's presence with thanksgiving when we have more months left than we do have money. We're to praise God when we're sick. We're to praise God when we're in pain. We're to praise and thank God when we don't feel like it. Now, let's think about this. There's nothing worse than doing something for someone and they never say thank you. You know, just think about how you feel when you help someone and they refuse to acknowledge that you had gone out of your way to help them. Now, doesn't that make you feel that they don't appreciate you or what you've done for them? Well, let this. Think back over your life. Uh, I had to do some of this myself. Think back over your life about the many times you probably did that to God. Imagine how many times we might not have thanked him when he sent someone to help us. We might not have thanked him when something happened that, that caused us to, to change direction in our lives. We, when something happened that caused us to go a different way, and we didn't thank God. Well, when God sent Jesus to die for us, he didn't have a backup plan. He gave his absolute best. You know, as I said three weeks ago, God, when he sent his son Jesus and Jesus died on a cross for us, God made a commitment to us. He committed eternal life to us. He committed his son to us. He committed his unconditional love to us. Knowing that God gave his absolute best should be reason enough for us to constantly shower him with praise and thanksgiving. 
you know, giving thanks with a grateful heart is, is that's kind of like jumping up and down when you get the present you've always won. And you know, when you were kids, we, we, don't, we do that as adults, so we don't jump up and down, but we feel like jumping up and down. When we get something that we've always wanted, somebody just gives us a gift. But giving thanks with a grateful heart is kind of like that. Giving thanks with a grateful heart is a heart choice. We give our Father thanks because we love him. We choose to thank him. He's our Father, and he cares for us. So our lives should be lives of, of praise and thanksgiving. There's a scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 and 17. We all know it. It's 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for it is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now, sometimes, some of us misunderstand rejoicing and think it is only done when something good happens to us. You know, it's kind of like the same thing is kind of true with prayer. Some people believe we should only pray when we need God to do something for us or for someone else. You know, it, it may be a challenge for us to pray in the midst of difficulty, or it may be a challenge for us to rejoice when things are going good because we think, you know, why should I be thankful in the middle of all of this mess? In the middle of all this hardship, why should I be thankful? That just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for me to be thankful. In, I'm in a mess, and it doesn't make sense for me to be thankful. Well, here is how the Apostle Paul dealt with tough times and hard times. In Philippians chapter 4, Verses 11 through 13. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. And he's, remember now, he's writing this letter from jail. He's in jail. He's in prison when he writes this letter. Here's what he says. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So this is how Paul dealt with hardship. And like Paul, we can live above our circumstances. We can rejoice and give thanks for everything because through everything, God is still God. God is still God in the middle of whatever we're going through. When my bills need pain, God is still God, so I can give thanks. Uh, when my bills are paid, God is still God, and I can give thanks. When my friends leave me, God is still God, and I can give thanks. When I get new friends, that stick closer than a brother. God is still God, and I can give thanks. When I don't have enough food on the table, God is God, I can still give thanks. When I met a big Thanksgiving feast and there's too much food to eat, God is still God, and I can give thanks. And you know, like Paul says, we can rejoice in everything because God is still God. He's, good, he's God in the good times. He's God in happy times. He's God in bad times. He is still God in sad times. In your best circumstances, you can rejoice and give thanks. And in your worst circumstances, you can still rejoice and give thanks. You can do this because God is God and your security rests with him and God doesn't change. He's the same. He loves you. He never changes. Now, your willingness to give thanks is a testimony of what you know about God and his relationship with you. 
Now, I realize that this understanding comes through a lot of trials and a lot of errors because we are not perfect in our thanksgiving. It's not about God and what he's doing. It's about us and our response to him in the midst of what he's doing. It's our choice. It's not about him and what he's doing. It's about our response to him and what he's doing in the midst of what he's doing. Before we do anything, before we ask God for anything, we should thank him for what he's already done. Psalms 50, verses 14 and 15 say this. Sacrifice thank offering to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. And call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Now we offer thanksgiving to God as part of our praise and worship to him. We do that first and not after he has done something for us, but before he answers our prayers. Thank him before. You know, it's easy to give God thanks when thanks for things we know he's already done. But it's more difficult to thank and praise him for things we're waiting for him to do. God is constantly constantly, actually, doing things for you that you don't know anything about. And it's tough, it's hard, it's difficult to praise God and thank him for what he's done that we don't realize he did. You know, there's a lot of stuff God does for you you don't even realize. You know, for example, many of you have told me about uh, uh, you're getting ready to go somewhere and you leave at a certain time and for some reason, the time was delayed, and you heard later there was an accident, and somebody was killed at the corner where you would have been had you been there at that time. Well, you know, thank God for that. You, know, you didn't know that. God does stuff for us we don't even know he's doing, so we can thank him beforehand. Look again at, 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 at Psalm 50, verses 14 and 15. Uh, Sacrifice thank offerings to God, fulfill your vows to the Most High, and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. In verse 15, uh, God makes a promise. He said we should call on him in the day of trouble, and he will deliver. He says he will deliver. So if our mindset is that of being thankful first and not after, we have no problem understanding that God's going to come to our aid. And when you get to that point in your relationship with God, when you get to that point in your journey, we can begin to give thanks to God for what he has done and for what he's going to do. Now, the last part of verse 15 of Psalm 50 says, that after God has answered our prayer, then we will not only thank him, but we will honor him. We read those verses again, 14 and 15. Sacrifice thank offerings to God, fulfill your vows to the Most High, and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Think about this. Our praise and thanksgiving to God is more valuable. Think about this now. Our praise and thanksgiving to God is more valuable to him than any sacrifice we could offer. Why? Because our praise and thanksgiving come from a heart, a heart that is grateful for what God has done for us. Take a look at Psalm 51, verses 16 and 17. Remember what I just said. Our praise and thanksgiving to God is more valuable than any sacrifice we can give him. Psalm 51, 16, 17. You, God, do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. Our praise and thanksgiving 
that come from the heart, God values. You know, when, when you turn on the news uh, any time of day, there's always some report of something bad happening. Uh, and with all the stuff that's constantly going on and bombarding our minds, it's easy to wonder why we have any reason to give thanks. Well, Paul tells us something else that we should remember. In Philippians chapter 4, Verse 6. Here's what he writes. Remember now, he's in jail. He's in jail. He's writing to a church in uh, in Philippi. He's in jail. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. We worry if something will all will not happen. If it will happen, we worry about how it will happen. If it will not happen, we worry about why it didn't happen. Now, we worry about any and everything. It is very difficult to be thankful when you're worried. It's difficult to feel blessed when you're worried. It's difficult to give God true praise when you're worried. It's difficult to remember and reflect on the things that God has already done when you are worried. If you don't understand anything else I've said today, if you don't understand anything that I've said today, let me say this. Satan, our enemy, wants you to constantly operate in a state of worry Because when you're worried, you're not giving thanks and praise to God. Remember what it is? It's difficult to give God true praise when you're worried. Most times when we're worried, worried, we're focusing on the problem and not the answer. When we're worried, we're focusing on the failure, not the promise of victory that God has given us. We are focusing on the giants in our lives. We're not focusing on the rock and the sling like David. We're focusing on giants, not the solution. We're focusing on the loss and not the gain when we worry. So Paul urges us not to worry, and then he gives a reason why we shouldn't worry. He said that with everything we face, We should take it to God with thanksgiving. We can go to God with thanksgiving because God has made promises and the word of God is full of them. We can go to God with thanksgiving because we have the guarantee from him that he will never leave us or forsake us. We have the guarantee that we we are more than conquerors through him. We can go to God with thanksgiving because God has never failed us before. We can go to God with thanksgiving because everything we have and everything we will have comes through the grace of God. So, for every reason we can find to doubt and worry, we can find another reason to give thanks for things God has already done for us and what he continues to do us that do for us, and he will do for us. So we can be thankful this Thanksgiving every day before and every day after it. Thank God for everything and thank him now for everything. Thank him for everything he's done for you in the past. Thank him for the things you don't even realize that he did for you. Thank him for what he's going to do for you today, tomorrow, and every day. Thank him for what he's already done for you through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, then you will live eternally with him. Thank him for all of these things. Let's let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, you are good. 
and your steadfast love endures forever. Even in the hardest times, we have a reason to worship you. Thank you, Father, for giving us victory and abundant life through Jesus Christ. Although we don't deserve it, you shower us with unconditional love and forgiveness. No matter, Father, what the future may hold, we will shout for joy and be thankful because you are with us. You comfort us and you bless us in the presence of our enemies. Nothing compares to you and no weapon can stand against you. In all things, we are more than conquerors through you. Father, we ask that you be glorified through us. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts bless your name. Because we want to praise you and thank you with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And for those of you that are here and are listening to me either by phone or Facebook Live or will later on YouTube, uh, you know, God has already provided for you. He's already provided salvation for you through his son, Jesus. And it's only when you realize that in the Holy Spirit that uh, comes to dwell in you when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior that you can really be thankful in all circumstances. And you can rejoice even in the worst of circumstances. I don't mean that everything will be perfect. I don't mean that there won't be times when you'll be down. I don't mean that there won't be times when you might even have some doubt. But once you have become one of God's children, you have victory, even when it looks like there's defeat. God has given you an invitation to do that. He's already provided for you. Here's all you have to do. It's in, you, it's in the Bible. It's in Romans 10, 8 through 10, and verse 4, 13. I read it every week because it is powerful, and it's the confession you need to make, and you are saved. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we believe. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And verse 13 says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If not done that, do that today. And then tell someone.